When a baby is born in Mattoon, Illinois, from that very first moment, those parents are learning how to be leaders in their own home. From prenatal moms to families with children under the age of three, the Birth to Three program comes alongside them at the most critical time in their life. We are using the seven habits and the leader in me in every aspect of our program. We encourage families to be proactive by taking responsibility for their choices. We sit beside families and we make goals with them. We help them utilize the resources around them to achieve these goals. Beginning with the end in mind, we prioritize what their family vision is with a family goal. Each goal is unique to each unique family. After the goals are written, we put first things first and help them determine their big rocks. As accountability partners, we ask them if they followed through with those steps. Think win-win is always on the forefront of our minds to create a trusting relationship with our families we support. We want them to trust our expertise as educators, and we trust their expertise as that child's parent. As home visitors, we are constantly modeling how to seek first to understand, then to be understood. We value what that family is saying about their child. We listen when there are concerns, and we take into account the own family diversities and values. We practice empathetic listening. The way that we present ourselves colors the family and the child's expectation, system, expectation of the education system for years to come. Synergy happens when the parents and the home visitor are working together for the benefit of that child. Whether we are working on fine motor skills or communication, we cooperate using our own unique set of differences. Sharpen the saw is something that we hold up highly. The home visitors in this program often reinforce the habit of self-renewal. The Birth to Three program through the Mattoon School District is continually using the seven habits to empower families to be leaders in their own homes, in their child's education, and into the community. From diapers to diplomas. Hi, my name is Jamie Holt and I am the principal here at Franklin Preschool um, with the Mattoon School District. Um, I'm just really excited to be talking to you about Leader and Me and what that looks like here in our preschool setting. We have been on a journey, I would say, over the past um, maybe year just on how Leader and Me can look at our preschool setting and what we can do even at the preschool level in order to make um, Leader and Me be successful. I, there isn't really a whole lot of preschools that are doing um, Leader and Me. Again, it, it was a challenge for us to figure out how we could do Leader and Me in a preschool setting and what exactly that would look like um, so that when our preschoolers would go to an elementary building, they would be very familiar with the concept. Our journey started out just going to some Leader and Me conferences and visiting um, lots of Leader and Me schools. And we did a lot of talking with um, some staff members at those Leader in Me schools, particularly those that were in the um, kindergarten and first grade range, just trying to figure out what they do and how we can incorporate that at our preschool setting and make it applicable to our preschools, preschoolers. Um, one of the first things that we did was we had to take a really hard look at what our culture and our environment look like to our families and to our preschool schoolers when they walked into our building. Like what kinds of things we could do to make it be more inviting and colorful and would just be an awesome place for preschoolers to be and want to be and want to be a part of our school and how could we incorporate those preschoolers into that particular into helping us design our environment and also our parents. How can we incorporate them as well? We do utilize our second step curriculum. So how can we take Leader in Me and then um, 
combine those two and just correlates coordinate some of those um, topics so that we are still doing our social emotional curriculum but we're also doing our leader in me and our seven habits within that so that was kind of a huge process that we had to undertake in, in combining and coordinating those two curriculums and we came up with lots of really cool ideas of how we can promote parent involvement and then also lots of really cool ideas um, that we can have events here at our school that are leader and me related and just information nights and things like that so we did a lot of brainstorming and a lot of planning and we are still in the initial first stages of that plan but we we do think we have a really great plan and how we can really coordinate this at the preschool setting and make it be awesome for our preschoolers so that when they go to elementary school, they're going to be set up and ready to go. Um, it's such an exciting concept to think that they will get it from birth all the way to 18 and that they're um, just thinking of how that will shape their mindset and their values um, with leadership and what that's going to look like when they, when they graduate. Oh, thanks. At Williams Elementary School, we're committed to three things. Empowering learning, developing leaders, and serving others. You're going to get a chance to hear from some of our action team members on how we took the Lighthouse Rubric 4.0 to create actionable, achievable goals to move our school forward. The Creating Culture Action Team was working on building our emotional deposits with our students. Being fully remote the first quarter, we struggled to build the relationships with the students like we normally would in person. So what the Creating Culture Action Team decided to do was to, each teacher was going to send a personalized postcard to each one of their students, and the response that we received has been outstanding. Uh, the students don't receive mail anymore, and it wasn't another video to watch, another link to click, and to see that um, emotional uh, relationship build with us has been great. Team here at Williams Elementary, uh, we knew going into this year that it was going to be uh, different for our committee because we couldn't plan our traditional family outreach events due to COVID-19. Um, as we looked through the different goals our group could possibly have, um, it became very clear that one goal would be the least stressful and most effective for our team to focus on for both teachers here at Williams Elementary and for our family and students. The goal we chose was to focus on student-led conferences. Um, we felt this was the best goal out of all of them because even though some teachers have started to incorporate students into their conferences, uh, most of us haven't. It allows us the opportunity and the focus to have conferences with our families outside of typical parent-teacher conferences. There's no reason that communication about our students' growth and progress um, needs to happen just one time a year. Um, but we're really excited to be taking these uh, first steps towards student-led conferences, and we feel like it's going to be a uh, great thing for us here at Williams Elementary. started with a clear end in mind. We established our big rocks and what actions we needed to accomplish in order to reach our goals. We found that the first need was to establish a yearly calendar and mark when each habit would be explicitly taught. Using the Leader in Me strategies, we were able to ensure the individuals in our school 
don't just know the habits, but they're truly living them. The Academic Systems team has been working on setting team goals. In fact, the students have found that by setting and meeting their weekly goals doesn't only benefit themselves, but their role plays into a bigger school goal where everyone's accomplishments lead to the success of our school. This is my leadership notebook. In my leadership notebook, I set my weekly goals for Lexi and Ripper. Each week, I record my progress to my teacher who adds it to our classroom and grade level scorebook. I'm committed to learning, leading, and serving by meeting my goals. So every week, once you meet your Lexia and River goals, your teacher will mark your class's minutes on the grade level scoreboard. Everyone's progress is important to the success of the team. Our grade is learning, leading, and serving by committing to our goals. When I make my goals, they are added to the school scoreboard. What I do makes it different from my whole school by meeting your goals. You become better. You help your team. You help your school. Williams is committed to learning, leading, and serving together. Riddle Elementary School, our success is driven by our school mission statement. We care, learn, lead, and grow together. By developing common language on which classroom and individual mission statements are created, our students and staff thrive on the foundation of the Leader in Me seven habits. The journey to leadership at Riddle begins with the development of student leadership, staff leadership, and the consistent language that is used with our families and throughout the community. Student leadership is developed and encouraged through collaboration in creating mission statements. These driving themes are generated by the students and are displayed proudly. Based upon the foundation of empowered leadership, students build their leadership portfolios. Let's take a look at how Leader in Me has transformed one teacher's classroom. Hi, my name is Brittany Hallbaker, and I am going to be sharing with you how the leader in me has transformed my classroom. Difference from the previous years before there were behavior problems, now I have respect among peers, other staff members in the classroom. I was chasing missing work before. Now they take ownership for their own learning. I had attendance wavering on who was there every day. Now I have spectacular attendance. Before we had a list of classroom don'ts, now we have a list of classroom expectations that the students created themselves. Before they had classroom jobs that were done haphazardly, leaving me with a lot of extra work to do. Now they have leadership roles. Before I was micromanaging them and now there is student-led accountability. Students are in charge of themselves, responsible for their learning, accountable for their behaviors and their choices, and they are leaders for each other in helping them follow their own expectations. Here, students are synergizing by working on complements to fill each other's emotional bank accounts. Students are fulfilling important roles within the school and the classroom, doing them with purpose and pride. Students are in charge of their roles and their roles success. These line supervisors asked to practice their hallway expectations. The students designed a project in which they created inspirational rocks and spread them throughout the building to encourage kindness and leadership. Here is a synergizing lesson done remotely where groups of students created a poster to represent a habit. Here is another example of that poster. The students used sticky notes to be able to communicate and work through the project together remotely. Here, the students were asked to create a poster representing what the seven habits mean to them, and this is just one of the many fantastic examples that I got.
I hope you now see how the leader in me has helped my classroom and my students transform into leaders. They are basically steps that I can follow to be better, a better leader. Use the seven habits, be kind, and be responsible. I feel encouraged to be a leader this year because I'm being pushed, but not really being pushed to use the seven habits. And if I use the seven habits, um, I know the seven habits are a way to make you a better leader. The seven habits have helped me so far by helping me understand more of what other people are feeling with empathy. My leadership role was the morning leader, and it made me feel proud that I was making other people smile and making the class comfortable. Um, because when two class, like two classmates, they couldn't work together. So finally, <laughs> finally, they like when we started working on the be proactive and begin with the end in mind. They started like listening and trying to focus, and they got more and more better. Staff members at Riddle Elementary have opportunities for shared leadership throughout the school. Teachers and staff participate in Lighthouse and Action Team activities. Professional development is driven by teacher interest and is often led by colleagues. School faculty meetings are facilitated by teachers through a partnership with principals and administrators. Our school district's mission is founded in the consistent leadership language used with families and community members. Through family events, our students begin to educate their families on the importance of living our lives through the seven habits. We are committed to the unity among our students, our families, our school district, and our community. We are proud to be a Leader in Me school. There have been a lot of physical changes at our school, which have a positive impact on the climate of MMS. We have all the seven habits painted and displayed throughout the school, from the wall to ceiling, tiles, to doors, to bulletin boards. You can find reminders of this everywhere you look. We have also started to recognize students for displaying traits of the seven habits. This is called Leader of the Month Hall of Fame, and teams suggest students to be recognized. There is a great sense of pride in Matthew Middle School from students and staff alike, and the physical improvements to help the building create a sense of ownership in Wildcats. Our middle school partners with a great number of community organizations and agencies to help build the bridge between schools and community members. From leading story time at the public library to working at the animal shelter to donating supplies at our local hospital. Our school has created lasting relationships with our surrounding community. The Essentials team is basically a group of teachers here at Mountain Middle School. Um, we're kind of like the specials teachers. We are the ones that um, are here to create like real world, real world application. Um, we offer different learning environments that may be more um, non-traditional. Um, I know like for the STEAM class, um, it's very collaborative, it's very hands-on. Uh, we spend a lot of time um, working through the four C's of 21st century learning, so collaboration, creativity, uh, communication, and critical thinking, because those are four attributes you need to have in order to be successful in the 21st century in theory. Um, so as a, an essentials team, we've kind of worked together to try to implement those. We have posters in the room and things along that. Uh, line and it, we we try to create real real world opportunities for kids to learn and grow. Um, in regards to the seven habits of highly effective people, um, la last year during the 2019-2020 school year, we worked collaboratively as a team. Um, we we took the eighth graders because they were the leaders of the school. Um, we brought them into the cafeteria um, during our. A co uh, collaborative time together with them and we basically kind of gave them like an introduction to um, a group of habits like habit one two and three at first and then we took the five or six week time we had with them and we just implemented those and really tried to hit those specific habits hard 
And then um, we would bring them back and we would have them take sticky notes and write how they exhibited each of the habits that we were learning about during that time frame. And they stuck them on sticky notes and then we put those posters up in the hallways for everyone to see. Um, and then we did it again with habits uh, four and five. And then um, we went into quarantine, so we weren't able to finish out that process. However, we were able to try and implement the first five or six um, to make sure that they were um, getting a good understanding of the seven habits. Um, this year, we haven't had that opportunity yet. Um, we are kind of working independently, I would say, within our classrooms to try to encourage the seven habits. Um, as a matter of fact, today I started um, really hitting the seven habits hard now that I've gotten the um, remote learning under my belt as an educator here in the district. Um, so what we are doing currently in my class, because um, I can only speak to my class as, at the moment, um, we I've implemented the habits um, by today the kids are starting in every class they're starting the design process so before they can build as an engineer they need to like, make a blueprint or a design um, so begin with the end in mind what materials are you going to need um, what are you going to need to be able to build an aqueduct what are you going to need to be able to build a Rube Goldberg machine or a prototype for a child that has cerebral palsy um, so that they can grip a cup of water or sand or something like that um, so what they're working on currently is beginning with the end in mind. With what are those materials that you need? Um, and they're making checklists in their Google Docs that they can choose to share with me so I can also see what it is they're looking at. Um, we are incorporating being proactive, making sure that they are um, <clears throat> having charged Chromebooks and making sure their materials are here, making sure that they are in the moment and they're working, uh, make sure that's what their brain is working on and, and focusing on. Um, um, uh, uh, seek to understand then to be understood. Um, seek first to understand then to be understood. Um, so what I'm going to be starting um, later this week is having independent um, conversations with each student. If they're remote, I'm bringing them over into a separate Google Meet and they are going, I'm going to listen to them so I can understand what it is that they are doing at that specific time throughout the engineering process with the STEAM class and then what they are going to do is they're going to let me know how things are going and then I'm going to listen and try to understand and then I am going to give some feedback to them and give them the opportunity to listen. That also ties in super well with the four C's of 21st century community, uh, for the 21st century learning of the four C's which is communication being one of the four. So the four C's of 21st century learning really tie in well with the seven habits of highly effective people because it's all real life and it's meeting people where they're at and helping them grow. Hello, my name is Anna Morton and I am a senior at Mattoon High School. I am so thankful I decided to join the Lighthouse team last year after realizing how much further we could improve our school. This year has been rough due to COVID-19, but the leadership action team I am a part of was determined to come up with a way to unite our community. In past years, we have had a day of service where students are able to go out to different places in the community and help where we are needed. This year, our leadership team came up with a specific plan to stay safe while connecting everyone together. The high school provided every student and staff member with a block letter M. We encouraged everyone to use their creative side and decorate it however they see fit. We also encouraged people to decorate the windows of local businesses. As seen in these pictures, students and staff members were able to show off their letter M's and other artwork to members of the community. This simple activity has gone a long way. Students now feel part of something bigger than themselves. It has been an amazing thing to be a part of, and I know it has brought our whole community together even more than before. Hi, my name is Janaya. I'll be talking about what the subgroup of the leadership team for direct lessons is working on. We are creating career readiness lessons, as well as lessons on the seven habits of highly effective people. MHS students will learn about things they need to know when starting their careers, as well as ways to manage stress and negative emotions. It is our hope to better prepare students for life after graduation. Some of you may be 
wondering how I became a part of Leader in Me. My story begins in the halls of MHS after school one day. Mr. Stewart was talking to some students about Leader in Me, and I was waiting to speak with him when he paused his conversation to ask me if I wanted to be a part of the organization. He then elaborated on what it would be about, and I knew then that Leader in Me was something I wanted to be a part of. A few months passed, I didn't hear anything about it, until suddenly I was invited to a Seven Habits training, starting a career in Leader in Me that I'm incredibly thankful for. One of the biggest things we accomplished at the leadership team last year was the recruitment of new members. We wanted to expand, and it was our job to do so. We set up invitations to meetings, our numbers grew, allowing us to further project our voices and the voices of our students here at MHS. My name is Hannah, and I'm a senior. My name is Lucas Landers, and I am a senior this year. My name is Renee Beltron, and I'm a sophomore here at MHS. MHS students will create a digital student portfolio to highlight their academic and personal growth throughout their high school career. These will be self-directed to allow creativity in presenting their strengths, personality, and uniqueness. This valuable tool gives all learners an opportunity to present their best self when applying for internships, jobs, and college admissions. Throughout our high school career, we will have the opportunity to tell our story in a leadership portfolio. This is a living, breathing portfolio that grows and changes as we do throughout our high school career and into our lives after graduation. Being able to work on my portfolio this year has been really eye-opening for me. As a senior at MHS, it's really good to be able to look back and see just how far I've come and also be able to show others what I've done and where I'm going. The making of my personal portfolio has given me a better understanding of who I am and how I want to be seen by others. Leader in Me has helped me reflect on my actions, thought process, and way of life. Leader in Me has taught me countless skills that will set me up for success in the future. Prioritizing my big rocks has allowed me to keep my saw sharpened, especially during the circumstances of remote learning. By intentionally leading my own life and beginning with the end in mind, I have become more proactive and efficient throughout all aspects of my life. Leader in Me has also given me the confidence to use my voice to advocate for myself, and I feel that my voice is heard and valued. I love the inclusive culture that Leader in Me provides, and I am so grateful for the opportunity to implement Leader in Me into my own life. I feel I am real world ready because of the habits and skills that Leader in Me has instilled in me. Hi, I'm Chloe Job, and I am a junior at Mattoon High School, and culture means to me of history, where you grow up, what you think, and what you feel. As a Mattian High School freshman, what does this quote mean to you? This quote actually had quite a change on me because as being a freshman, middle school was nothing like high school. And by taking this quote into mind, I will be ready to graduate. I will be ready to go to college. I will be ready to do anything that I can do in order to succeed in life by living by this. How does the Mattian High School purpose have an impact on you? Okay, as a senior, this has a huge impact on me because I am getting ready to graduate and all of these things right in here help me going into my college and my career, like improving continuously as I get into college. That's something that I know I need to do and I am constantly doing right now. And defining clear goals, eliminate the unimportant, seek first to understand and then be understood. That's just a few of the things that have a huge impact on the kids here. So for the past four years, you have been listening to Mr. Stewart say this quote. How has it affected your life? So this is a great quote to live by because you need to think before you act. Um, before you act, you need to think about that because it can really affect your life or someone else's. Think before you speak because you can actually um, you can hurt somebody's feelings really bad if you don't think about that. And then be kind to one another. We should all be kind to one another. And in this school, we have a very good system of being kind to one another and helping our community out. What does this quote mean to you? This quote means that you need to live your best life, love everyone, and learn to the best of your ability, get the most out of your knowledge. And then when you graduate, you want to leave an imprint. So, and all of these things help you leave that imprint. What does the M symbolize to you? The M represents our school colors, and we're very happy to show that to visitors that come into the office and represent our school. What does this quote mean to you? 
This quote means a lot to me because one of the biggest things the Student Lighthouse team tries to do is make everybody see the potential in themselves and get everybody to be a huge part of this school. And we really love that because everyone that passes through here is a huge part in the school whether they see that in themselves or not. We're facing the future together. Be on the lookout because there's more surprises to come.